And this report um, I designed to look for empty custom properties. Now, why do you care about that? So the answer to that is if you use your custom properties correctly, then they are extremely helpful across the platform. You can use them in alerting, you can use them in reporting, you can use them to filter resources on uh, your different pages, you can use them to do account uh, limitations or report limitations or whatever. I mean, they're immensely useful. Um, you can't create- All right, I'm gonna just jump in here and I'm gonna say that if you're not using custom properties, you are solar winsing wrong. Yeah. That's just, I'm just, I'm judging you now. That's all. That's all that we're doing. <laughs> Judging you now. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Custom properties are amazing. And uh, I love them so much. I use them all the time. And I'm going to use them here. Um, what we're going to do is look for empty ones. And why do we care about empty ones? So the answer to that is if you're using custom properties in your alerting, let's say, we'll, we'll take a specific example in your alerting and you have alerts that are dependent on a custom property being filled out. Like maybe you have one that differentiates between the server team and the network team and whatever. And you have this alert set up to to, if it's a network node, go to the network team. And if it's a server node, go to the server team. But you probably don't have anything set up for, let's say, if that field is not filled out. So no one will get alerted if it's not filled out. Now you can make custom properties mandatory and you can pre-fill them with um, information as well. And I do recommend using those if it makes sense to. It doesn't always make sense to, but usually it makes sense to. That way you don't run into, you know, fat fingering, you don't run into typos, you don't run into weird spaces or capitalization problems. Um, they're just all symmetrical. So what, um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look for things that don't have custom properties that we're using in this test environment that are important. So what we're going to do is we're going to stay on node because that's what we care about. We're going to switch to the advanced selector again because it is a little bit more, uh, it gives you a little bit more flexibility on what you can pull in. Now we're going to go to select fields and we're going to go down, we're going to go down, down, down this list. There's a lot of things in here, but what we're going to look for is our nodes custom properties right there for us. Now we care about the decommission date and we care about the purpose. And so we're gonna say, um, we're gonna select one, we're gonna say decommission date, and then we're gonna say is equal to, and then just just leave it, just leave it alone. It's blank. Or we can say, we can come in here and say is empty, which we're gonna is use. Empty, right. So we're gonna come in here, I'm gonna add another one, add a simple condition. So you can add an advanced condition, you can add an and or block. So you can be a little bit more flexible as far as how you're doing this. And this looks exactly the same as your alert builder. So if you're already comfortable with alerts, this will be comfortable for you. We're gonna add a simple condition and we're gonna go back into our custom properties. And if you're not comfortable with the whole hierarchy here, you can always do a search. Just wanna point that out, but Absolutely. Uh, we know where we're going. Yeah, I know where I'm going. And also for custom properties it is helpful. Uh, it's helpful if you have a bunch. I've seen environments that have hundreds of custom properties. Um, so having a list is a little bit easier to process when you're trying to create these kinds of things than searching for specific ones because you might forget one that was created or you might come in here and look at this list and go, who made that and what are they using it for? <laughs> Um, so that definitely has happened. So um, we're gonna select our purpose and we're gonna add that one. And we're also gonna say is empty. Now we don't want them both to be empty. We wanna see when either one is empty. So I'm gonna change this to an or condition, but just notice that there's also a must not. And then there's at least one child must not. So this is like an and not, and this is an or not. So we're just gonna use or. Switch it to an or, we're gonna create our data source. And we're going to call it I can, uh, nodes with empty CPs because that's custom properties um, right. for me. Uh, you might not know what that is later, but I'll know what it is because I've been using Orion for a very long time. Um, so we're going to add our columns that again took us right in. So we want to know what node it is mm -hmm. and we want to know uh, we can go in here and search so we can say um so as you're searching i just want to clarify for folks who are, are looking what we did before is we set the condition of what's going to get listed in the report we didn't say what's going to show up what information we just said that any node that satisfies this criteria again if you're familiar with alert triggers then that is the alert trigger but now what we're doing is we're saying, this is the information that's actually gonna show on the screen. The two don't have to necessarily be the same thing. 
Absolutely, absolutely. So we're gonna come in here and we say we want, we're gonna select our caption, which is our node name, and we're gonna select the two properties because we want to see them. Because if one is filled out and the other one's not filled out, then we still wanna see that. So we're gonna add them. And I wanna talk about something else here. So before you saw me come in here and rename your column. So you can rename any of your columns. We, we know that now already. So I'm gonna come in here and again, rename this to make more sense for me. I'm gonna rename it mm -hmm. no name. And then I wanna talk about some of these other options real quick. So we have these display settings here. This is really useful. So what we're gonna do is this amazing little thing right here, details page link, is gonna automatically create a hyperlink on our node name to take us to the node details page. I'm and so glad you showed that, yes. It's, it's wonderful, and you can do that as well. On our previous report, we talked about interfaces. You can do it for interfaces. Anything that has its own details page, you can automatically add that details page link and it's gonna pull it through Swickle on the back end, um, which is awesome. So we're gonna add that. There are a couple of other options there as well, but that one is, I think, <laughs> the most useful and most important for being able to manage things through reporting. It also means that if this report isn't just showing up on a knock screen that is sort of look, don't touch, that if this is a, a page that people go to, that things become clickable and so that people yes. can go through. And it's not just, again, like you said, the node name, it can also be the interface or even, you know, CPU or any of those other elements. So you can see a report that is displaying a list of problematic uh, elements or things, and people can get right to work going to those things and updating them or fixing them or changing them. Sorry, I just had to... Um, Absolutely. So you notice there's a couple of other things. You can allow HTML tags. That's a little bit more advanced. I'm not going to get into it. You can hide the column. So if you want to have it for while you're looking at it, while you're making it, but you want to hide it for the eventual final report, you can choose to hide it, but leave it in your report. Um, and or you for can, sorting. Or for sorting. Exactly. It's also really good for sorting. If you want to sort by, like, say, date, but you don't want them to see, or grouping, but you don't want mm -hmm. to see it, you can have it there. It's sorting or grouping, but it doesn't show. Sorry. Absolutely. Um, and then... This is not relevant to what we're doing right now, but you have data aggregation options, which are, you know, count, min, max, and that kind of thing. Um, I don't care about that for what we're doing with this report, so I'm not going to add anything there. And you can also do some basic um, formatting for the visual aspect of your report. You can change your column widths, you can change your alignment for each field. And why you might care about that, especially if you have a lot of fields coming into one report. Like if I had, let's say, 10 columns trying to come into this. It's going to try and auto fit it as best as possible. Um, but this might come in handy if you're using, uh, like if you want to do something that goes up on the knock screen and that's going to be a wider screen, you might want to adjust those column widths to make it fit better on that screen. Um, and also you can, you can use it for many other things. So like if I was using, um, a field that has very small, you know, it's like a single digit or double digit number in it. I don't need it to be as wide as my node name field. You know, I don't need it to be the same width. So I might come in here and make some little adjustments to make it look better. Um, so I just wanted to mention those real quick. And then um, you have some more fields down here. So if you needed to create a top report, top 10, top 50, whatever, um, or if you wanted to do a percentage of that, then you can do that as well. Um, and then we have sorting and grouping, which Leon mentioned. Um, and you can use that. It doesn't have to be hidden columns. It can be any column in the report, um, in the table, any column, and the same for the grouping. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, uh, you know, I was going to group by, and I'm not going to group by. And the reason for that is it's going gonna, it's gonna to change. It's going to alter what the report looks like. I'll just show you real quick what I mean. So if I preview this resource with the fields as they are, with no grouping and no sorting, it's just going to show them in a kind of like a flat format. Now, if I go back and I want to sort because I need to sort, I want to sort by no name and uh, ascending is fine. You can change it to descending as well by just clicking it. Um, and then if I create a group by, that's going to change the way my report looks a lot. So now it's very spaced out. Um, and for this report, I don't want to do that. But if I was pulling a bunch of different metrics, um, let's say I wanted to have, you know, my node, name, my device name, and then I also wanted to pull all of the interfaces. Group by is mm -hmm. super useful, so you can show each of the interfaces under the nodes. Um, but for this report, I'm not going to do the group by. I'm just going to do the sorting. So we're going to just delete that. Super easy. And once again, we're going to name it. and submit and it'll take us back to our page. And we're gonna name our report again. 
And the reason why um, I name all of these things, which seems kind of redundant if you're just doing a single resource and a single report with a single data source, I think it seems kind of redundant. And you may think that and you may not bother with the renaming of them. But once again, I do like to have them named that way in case I later decide I want to add columns or I want to add content, I can know what the differentiating factor is there. Um, and you'll notice I didn't mention this earlier, but you can change your logo. So it automatically defaults to the SolarWinds logo because it is your SolarWinds Orion instance. But if you wanted to change that to your company logo, you can definitely do that as well. Um, and I kind of skipped past all of this stuff earlier, and I'm just gonna take you through a couple of the options. So it, first it will take you through a preview of what your report is gonna look like. And you'll notice that these no names are blue because they're hyperlinked. And then you can hover over them and see you know, where it's gonna take you. And it's gonna take you to each of those no details pages. And you'll see some of these fields have information, but they don't have information in the other fields. So our report is doing exactly what we want it to. It's telling us where those fields are not filled out. Now, I might not care about particular devices because I don't need to alert on them for that particular alert or what have you. Uh, but you are gonna probably care about some of them if you're using your custom properties in that fashion. So we're gonna go back, go to the next page. And the next page is gonna take us into a couple of options here. You can give your report a description. If you're making a, a report that isn't gonna make sense to somebody else or that um, you know some you know you're gonna be transitioning out of your position in a few months or you're preparing to transition to another person. I've seen this a lot, you know, companies get shuffled around. Most likely SolarWinds admin is not your only job. So there's gonna be more than one admin or you're gonna be transitioning those responsibilities to somebody else. And in those cases, you may find a report description extremely helpful or if you um, are gonna come back to this report at a later date and then look at it and <laughs> not know what it is, you definitely wanna have that report description filled out. Um, right, we're back to like help out future you by explaining, have present you explain to future you what you were thinking when you did this. But the reality is that we all as IT pros, I think, understand that documenting what we're doing and why, you know, you can put yes. in who requested this, when they requested this, when they were, because a lot of times we're not, as as monitoring engineers, we're not generating reports just for the fun of it, we're generating because somebody made a request. Absolutely. So you can say who the requester is and when they asked for an edit. And that way when they come back and say, but I don't understand, how come that data element is in there? Or how come it's not in there? And you can say, well, if you look at the description, you can see where you said, I hate that column, it's ugly or whatever, and I took it out and now you want me to put it back and please make up your mind or whatever. Yeah, absolutely. And I've used it um, kind of in that fashion as well, especially as a contractor coming into an environment that I don't own. So I'll come in there and write, you know, created by Crystal for so and so, because usually I'll have my own account. So it'll it'll be marked that I'm the creator of this report. But if I created it for a specific purpose or I created it for a specific team or anything like that, I like to make sure I come in here and put that in report description because uh, once again, if someone comes in here later or, you know, as a contractor, you're not going to be there forever, most likely. So eventually when the contract is up or they've moved on to something else, then they'll be able to come back in here and say, oh, I know what this was doing. I know what what this was for if they ever need to edit it. Um, right. And one more thing that mm -hmm. actually we, we mentioned right at the beginning of this episode, but it's important is these you can share your reports on the content exchange. Yes. So if you put in a description created by and here's why and here's what the purpose was then you know you get a little bit of credibility and you had get your name out there too but also people who are browsing through the content exchange really understand what this report is supposed to be doing well absolutely and as leon and i were both thwack mvps before we joined SolarWinds as employees i think we both would say that the community is a fantastic place and there are a lot of things out there that you can find either home reports or anything like that in the content exchange to pull into your environment don't reinvent the wheel don't make don't make this harder on yourself if you don't need to i mean right. it's time consuming sometimes and you definitely don't always need to do that and we have a great community a great mvp space and um, lots of people helping each other out so definitely recommend um, checking that out if you have not Yes. Uh, a couple of other things. So you can have, as I mentioned, custom properties are useful everywhere. You can also add custom properties to your report. Um, we're not gonna do that today. Um, you can change the report category. So if you wanted to put it in a specific section, there's all of your report categories that already exist um, are here, or you can add a completely new one. So if you wanted to say, um, create server team reports or something like that to make it easier for like new hires or new SolarWinds admins to understand what it was created for, or what team or anything like that, you can come create new categories. Um, and you can also add limitations. So if you wanted to, by default, there's 
there's no report limitations, but you can add categories. So if you wanted to say, um, again, I'm gonna reference this again, if you have different teams that are using SolarWinds um, and you have them limited by what they can see. So like if your server team is in there, they are, and I'm gonna say should, they should only be able to see their equipment. There is absolutely no reason for them to see the network equipment or be able to fiddle with it in any way. Um, so if your server team is in there and they have their account limited already, so they're not seeing the rest of the stuff, you can also limit what reports they can see. So they don't need access to networking reports or anything like that, then you can put a limitation in there. You can categorize your reports, put them all, together in specific spots and then say, okay, you get these reports and you get those reports and you don't need any other reports. You often have a lot of people that can see your SolarWinds data, but they aren't admins and they shouldn't be. Yeah, and and uh, limitations on their own is a much larger topic. You can put limitations yes. at the account level. You can put account uh, limitations at the view level. You can put uh, limitations at the report level and they can stack. But the idea is that um, if you build a report they will obey account limitations. Yes. You don't have to put them in here also, but at the same time, you can make a report that is incapable of showing, like you said, network equipment, mm -hmm. no matter who's looking at it or whatever. And that way, and, and that allows you to do things that you might not be comfortable or want to do as the filtering, the data set that we did at the beginning of this example. Absolutely, absolutely. Lots of options, um, mm -hmm. which can be part of the problem. It can be overwhelming. Um, so Leon mentioned also that you can schedule your, your report. So I just wanted to quickly show you can set up a schedule. So auto, by default, it's always set to not schedule. Um, but if you wanted to set up a schedule, then you can assign a schedule. So there's some that are already created or you can create uh, you can create pre-formed ones. So it just has, you know, like a very mm -hmm. basic send it every day at 7 a.m. or whatever. And you can assign that schedule to as many reports as you want. Or you can create individual schedules for the for the individual ones. And that, uh, that schedule assignment looks very similar to the one that you have set up for your alerting schedules. Um, so it should mm -hmm. also be familiar to you. Um, I'm not going to get into the nitty gritty details of that because um, that is not what we're doing today. So I'm just going to say no schedule needed. And then it takes us to a summary where it shows us everything. This looks very similar to your alert creation summary as well, um, where it shows you what you did, shows you all the things that you created, and then you can preview it again if you want, or you can click this box here to show the report after saving. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. We're gonna show the report after saving, and it's gonna take us into our created reports. And from here, we could just go into those individual nodes and then go populate those custom properties. Or we could keep this on a separate tab and go open up our manage nodes page and go do a bunch of them together or manage custom properties page uh, and edit those a bunch together so that we can get that up to date and hopefully clear out this list because uh, we want to keep our Orion in instance clean.